Good morning. Hi, Bryony. How are you? Hello. I'm good, thank you. And you? Yeah, good. Good to see you. You too. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see a face, an actual face. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, oh, right, we're just going to give everyone. it a, a minute or so just for people getting an opportunity to log into the session. Hi, Liz. How are you? So she can hear us. I don't know. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're just going to give it a uh, a minute or so to allow folk to dial in. We've got about fifty odd registered for today's session. I think, which is um, a fantastic response. People must be really interested in this topic. So um, we're just going to give uh, a, maybe another thirty seconds to allow people to join us. Yeah, we can always be letting people in, can't we? As um, yeah. as we get started into the Absolutely. beginning. But it's good to see um, good to see you joining us. Some some similar names to our last session that we did as well, which is good. It's good that you've wanted to come back. That's Absolutely. always a bonus. Absolutely. I know we've got some new people who have registered for this session that had didn't uh, have a chance to attend the last session as well, which oh, is great. Good. So. That's brilliant. Yeah, awesome it's really stuff. good. Okay, I'm going to get my slide share just so we're ready, our end, Eric, when we do get started. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to say, oh, sorry. Go on. I was going to say, I, th I think it's a couple of minutes past half past. So should we, should we get going? Let's get going because we haven't got much time, have we? Do pop a little note in chat and say hello in there. And if you're getting blue bubbles popping up, then just change your team settings to do not disturb. And that will stop those coming up because we'll be in the chat lots today. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Point. So it might say in a meeting on your teams, just change it to do not disturb. And that will stop that happening. OK, so welcome to the second in the series of building a modern management toolkit. Um, this is the focus on how we can support people through the cost of living crisis. And we're not going to spend a lot of time defining what that is because we're all kind of living through that on a weekly, monthly kind of day to day basis, really, with a lot of challenges happening both financially, but from a well-being perspective. And uh, we're going to see a lot of that happen it, it coming into the new year as well. So Hayley and I wanted to put something on which enabled you to take away some practical tips and tricks and some conversational skills to be able to either help you as managers or as L&D and HR practitioners help your managers to be able to support your teams. The session is being recorded, um, so we'll go on to YouTube after today's session. I'll send the link out like we did last week. 45 minutes, so again, a nice light bite session, pacey and practical as per usual, as you'd expect from us. Um, so let's get into it. So for those who don't know me, I'm Erica Farmer. I'm the business director and co-founder of Quantum Rise, um, 20 years corporate learning and development experience for some of the UK's largest brands such as British Gas Virgin, Specsavers and LV. And I've been involved in L&D and apprenticeships during that time as well. I sit on a number of provider boards and support when it comes to things like virtual and digital learning. Um, this is quite a, an interesting topic that I'm hearing on boards and I'm hearing from L&D teams and we're working with some fairly large clients. We're doing some podcasts, we're doing some upskill for managers. Um, so it feels like there's some momentum gathering in this space. Um, I'll pass over to Hayley for an introduction. Brilliant. Thank you, Erica. So, yeah, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Hayley Bird, I'm co founder, delivery director at Quantum Rise. Um, so, for me, I've got about, it's nearly 15 years experience in total now in various education, skills, careers, roles, um, and 10 in learning and development. So, a lot of that was spent face to face. Um, but for the last seven years, I've been um, purely remote working and taking kind of this idea of virtual interaction, digital learning, um, and just, just sharing the love with it, really and trying to inspire people and share how we can do this differently um, and how we can help people with practic really practical learning online um, in a way that feels a bit different, a bit more interactive, a bit more engaging um, and also being able to share really practical tips for you to take away. So that's what today is all centred around um, and let's get going. So before we get going, let's go straight over to you guys. Now, Eric has given a pretty good introduction there in terms of actually why this is relevant, and we'll, we'll solidify that really shortly. But before we do, um, tell us how it's going to support you. How is, how is this going to support you in your role by being here today? What would make the next 45 minutes a success for you when you leave at the end of the session? So just hop into the chat there and let us know your thoughts um, and make this really relevant for you. And keep this, because this is your why, ultimately, of being here. Yeah. 
So keep it really at the forefront of your mind as we go through the session um, this morning. And I can still, we've still got people joining us. So welcome if you've just joined us and, uh, and hope you enjoy the session today. So we've just asked people, just introduce yourselves. Tell us how today's topic is going to support you. How is this relevant for you? You've probably all had busy mornings um, and you've arrived here this morning. So just spend a minute to focus on how this is important for you. We'll wait for some of those comments to come into the chat. I can see lots of people typing away and yeah. thinking about that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And it might be that in your organisation you haven't started thinking about this yet, but it might be actually you have started talking about it either with your senior leaders or your HR team or your payroll team or your wellbeing team. Um, there's a, I pinged out a blog that I think I sent for everybody just around some practical tips for L&D um, around this space as well. So um, more and more it's going to become a focus, particularly going into the new year. Definitely. And Zara's pulled in there, offer support to our employees. Absolutely. So you want to be able to take some tips from this and be able to support people because ultimately that's what people may well need as we go into the end of this year and particularly into next year. For Emma, help me understand how those in management positions can support people exactly. So how, what have we got within our control and within our toolkit as managers to really be able to support people um, throughout the cost of living crisis? Because we can't solve it. So that's that's off the card so what we, what can we do supporting teams building my ability to be a critical pathway um love that Jeanette gaining better support and opportunity so focusing on that that critical thinking and that hang on what can we do where's the opportunity I love that take on it as well loads of stuff coming in here which is brilliant um been in my role for almost two years Naomi I think the topic will give me an insight into how I can support people so it's really nice to see the comments coming through for centered around support um because we can't fix it but what we can do is look at what's in our toolkit to be able to help people not just for, as individuals and for them but for the business as well that we're working with in. so the reason for this and the why is is the cross the cost of living crisis is probably affecting everybody almost everybody um, including I would guess most people on this call in one way or another so it's really critical that managers feel equipped to have personal sensitive conversations with employees to keep the working environment open and productive so that's ultimately the why is, is how confident do managers feel to be able to actually have some of these more personal conversations so 89% of adults in Great Britain report that their cost of living crisis has increased, their cost of living, sorry, has increased. This is 46 million people, and that's according to the most recent ONS survey. So 46 million people here are being affected by an increase in costs. Me, definitely one of them, but we won't go into that. <laughs> Not my mortgage. In the, in the fixed rate mortgage, six months. Hayley and I anyway. talk mortgage rates too much. <laughs> So, so with that aside, this is huge, isn't it? It's a big thing for people at the moment. So having a look at this question now, and I'm going to launch a quick poll for you. Who is most likely to be affected in your organisation by the cost of living crisis? So I'm just going to launch that poll. You'll see a black box come up on your screen. You can scroll down. There's, there's about, I think, about seven or eight different responses there. So just select the one you think, click Submit. And let's see what we get. OK, so I can see lots of different things coming in here. OK, so so far you can see on the responses there, we've got about 92 percent of you saying everyone and absolutely right. Everybody is affected in one way or another. That doesn't mean that HR teams and L&D teams are exempt from, from these things. And, and the same with your senior leaders, your CEO. Everybody in one way or another is going to be affected by this. So pop into the chat again for me. How are your teams or your colleagues or your organisation or people around you, if you haven't got a wider organisation, how are your teams feeling about the uncertainty of rising costs right now? And I'd like you to pop into chat and find an emoji or a gift that reflects that feeling for people and where they are right now. We've got Christmas on the horizon. Just got my seven year old's birthday out of the way. So I feel like this time of year is full of cost. How are your teams feeling about this right now? And just find a visual GIF emoji, which is just under where it says type a new message in the chat to reflect on some of that. Big question mark, Erica. Absolutely. Sophie, a little bit uncertain. Same for Zara. <laughs> Worried, Jeanette. Absolutely. Karen, <laughs> I don't know what that one is, Karen. 
hiding, hiding behind hiding something behind maybe it. yes burying their head, <laughs> head. Naomi's found the same one absolutely so maybe just ignoring it and not thinking about it tired of it Stacey there's some really interesting reflections different emotions and I think what this starts to show us is that people will be feeling different emotions about this and a response to emotion is the skills we need as a manager to be able to unpick some of that and to be able to support people with those uncertain feelings so with that in mind then what can managers do when supporting people through the cost of living crisis. There's going to be things which are in our control. There's going to be stuff which is out of our control. So let's take a minute focusing on the things we can either control or influence as managers to support people, to help people. What can we do? What are the options out there for us? It's difficult as well, isn't it? Because like with most of, most of us being affected, it's thinking about your own situation but almost like having to park that in a way isn't it which can be it's easier said than done and put yourself in the shoes of other people mm, absolutely because naturally we go to wanting to relate to people don't we and we use our own stories to do that um but sometimes that might not be what somebody needs to hear definitely i love that and simon cowell <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one so we're seeing a lot of kind of being there ask how they're feeling. Most importantly, listen, Sophie. Reducing duration of expenses, payment time phrase. So there's really practical things, limiting travel. Even I've even got a friend who was saying to me with her mortgage costs rising, that now she's having to go into the office two or three days a week because she's hybrid working. She's even worried about just her, her standard fuel expenses, not even additional expenses mm. on top of just getting to work and parking for the day and things like that. So there's a lot going around, Jeanette, definitely about that practical stuff being available conversations listen actively Bryony and we'll, we'll delve into that a little bit more and what that really means um, throughout the session empathy Emma spot on sometimes people just need to vent they don't actually need you to provide a solution you might not be able to provide a solution and that can be really hard for people when we want to help offer overtime Naomi so yeah maybe offering other working options showing empathy ask questions and listen love that Sara so loads of great comments coming keep them coming um, if you if you haven't managed to get yours typed in because it's all really relevant as we move on and start to consolidate some of this so some of the things that managers can do I love that. I just want to touch on Bryony's there. Think about the impact of Christmas parties, the outfit, the taxi home, the cost mm. of drinks. Yeah, definitely that kind of fear of missing out that people might get if they don't go or can't Especially go. the £10 for the secret Santa as well. It all adds up, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. People are having to say no to things this year, aren't they, I think? And that's becoming quite clear, even in, in our own circles. We're probably hearing more people having to say no to things. So managers can't directly fix an employee's problem, but they can help people to help themselves. So they can ask the right questions. They can support people. They can help people to come up with solutions. They can be empathetic. And this has come up quite a lot in the session. And to be honest, a lot of our session today is going to be focused around the idea of empathy. Um, and Eric is going to take you through that really shortly. Empathy is something that some of us do really naturally and some of us not so much. So we're going to really delve into that and self-reflect on that today. Being able to have sensitive and difficult conversations and just very quickly as I work through the others, what stops us having sensitive and difficult conversations at work? Let me know in the chat. It'd be good to hear your thoughts on that. But having those more sensitive and difficult conversations opens up a dialogue which helps to be able to support people, brings in that empathy. But let me know what you think stops you or what stops people. Providing the factual and practical information. So what is out there? What can I draw on? Where can I go to? And definitely, and this has come up, be mindful of the upfront costs. What, what are we asking people to spend out? Oh, you'll get it back in 30 days. Well, 30 days is a bit late because all my outgoings are coming mm. through before that. So thinking about that and not wanting to speak up on some of that stuff. And I think that's a really important part and all sits under that umbrella of empathy and understanding. Um, Karen's put in there so when I talked about the sensitive and difficult conversations you know wanting to respect priv privacy so we don't always want to cross that line it can cause embarrassment Liz it can feel a bit like an, a bit intrusive so this is where our conversations need to be sensitive practical empathetic and open to be able to support people where they want it 
not knowing what to say or if a topic comes up what do I do with it now I've asked this question I'm in now I've what opened the can of worms oh my god yeah, yeah where do I go now absolutely and you have to look for signs as to whether yes so being really aware um, of those kind of cues that people are happy to talk so this is this is where Erica and I went in our discussions and our sort of thought around this. But this is really supported also by what the CIPD are starting to, to produce and talk about. So there's quite a lot of information now starting to come through around the cost of living in terms of what organisations can do. And the ones that we found really relevant for today's session around the CIPD recommendations were around actually understanding what the policy is in, around financial well-being, knowing it and being able to support people using that and the benefits package. Are people utilising the full benefits that they're able to? Are they aware of everything? Know about the employee's contract. You might get people coming to you asking about second jobs. You know, am I able to go and get a second job? Can I go and do a few hours in Tesco's of an evening to cover some of my additional costs or to give me money for Christmas or whatever it might be? So understanding where that sits and where, where where their position is there is really important. Creating that inclusive environment, bring people together in a way that they feel recognised, heard, understood, and also establishing that trust. You want that dialogue to be there. You don't want these conversations to feel difficult and challenging. There's a lot there, isn't there? I mean, that is a lot expected of managers right now. When you really pick that apart, um, especially where managers in, 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 you know, historically have been very responsible for the performance and the targets and the operational parts of that business, all of a sudden, there's a big piece here around people. So I'm going to pass you over to Erica now, and Erica's going to start really getting under the skin of some of the skills that are needed for this. Yeah, thanks, Hayley. I think your last point is really, really valid because people would have come into a role, potentially done that role for a number of years. And it's around managing performance, managing processes, managing what traditionally the business needs. And now it's starting to feel a little bit different. Do I have the skill set? And I recently written a blog um, around actually no longer that kind of vanilla management training, I think will hit the nail on the head for managers coming into what feels a, a very different for all of us. So what does your L&D strategy say about that? What does your leadership capability strategy say about that? Are you still rinsing and repeating what you've always done around communication, for example? Or are you really starting to get in the, under the around actually how does that fit the context for next year so have a think about that so what I'd like to hear from you is what skills do you think so skills as in going forward in the future what do we need to upskill managers um, to support teams during a crisis and, and if you're going to say something like empathy which we've talked a lot about already go go a little bit more micro on it what does the skill look like for the manager what's the specific practice do they need what's the requirement what would it look and feel like if you were outside observing perhaps a conversation around you know a, a team member having a difficult time going through a crisis cost of living or, or any other crisis when it might be give us your thoughts in the chat hmm. what do those skills need to look like if you were doing a, a needs analysis right now for all of the managers in your business what would be the kind of top three things that you think do you know what if we nailed that for next year in the cost of living crisis with everything else going on, I'd be really, really happy around our management capability. Give us your thoughts in the chat. Great question and really delving under that top level skill of what we see as a skill. I think that's really Absolutely. important here. What does empathy look like? Yeah. What is the skill that sits under it? Let's, let's move away from that vanilla I refer to it as the, the management development risotto in my blog. You know, we're, we can all make a risotto. and Risotto hasn't really changed over years. It's normally like beef or mushroom, isn't it? We need to make a different kind of meal now. So let's, let's, let's hear from you. What does that skill, that skills look like to support people in a crisis? And to be fair, Erica, people are not very good at making risottos. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. How good is your risotto baseline? Yeah, exactly. I love that. Uh, Phil says coaching life skills. How can we take our coaching models and apply them to a well-being mm. conversation? And are we truly coaching in the moment or are we asking leading questions or are we on our agenda rather than asking uh, and being on the team members agenda? So I, I think that's a great one. Absolutely. Listening's coming up. Time to talk and support's coming up. Active listening. Agility. Yeah, agility is a good one, Emma. So 
more and more the world uh, the world economic forums talking about in the next five years is the number one skills going to be needed in business is agility whether that's learning agility or with projects you know the ability to put something down and pick something up new quite quickly and apply those skills and behaviors in kind of almost record time which gives organizations that competitive edge when things start to change like we had two years ago with the pandemic Jeanette says a practical framework for managers to be able to follow. Love that, Jeanette. Absolutely. Give them the words, give them the framework and work with them to build those words and framework so they don't feel done to. I think that's brilliant. Being able to understand how people are feeling based on their body language, more about what they're saying. Absolutely, Naomi. I think that's absolutely. Linda says accepting uh, we do not have all the answers, Linda. I love that. You know, dealing with the unknown is a big skill that we need going forwards. We can't just solutionize all the time like we have done. Enabling people to help themselves. And that's what Haley was talking about earlier. So I think that's really important. We've kind of summarized. This is a bit of a catch all, but I think everything that you're saying, um, Abby says upskilling around signposting, um, boundaries, you know, all of this stuff, that kind of line of coaching to counseling is going to start to get a bit blurred next year as well. So I think that's a great shout. Listen, be in the moment. And I don't know if you're like me, but I'm one of those people that I have to really tame the beast when somebody says something and I might have been through something very similar and I go, oh, yeah, I did that. And this is what I did. And this was my solution, you know, it, it, all with the right intention. But actually, people just want to be heard sometimes. They just want you to sit and listen and nod and understand. So difficult when that urge to jump in is there for some of us. This is our coaching skills that we talk about. Support people with critical thinking, problem solving, rather than telling people what they should go and do, actually ask them what, what's going to help you right now? What kind of things have you tried? What things could you try? Nice open questions to prompt that thinking. And that empathy, as Hayley talked about so far, so important. That's one of the things that really distinguishes humans from the rest of the animal kingdom is the ability to put ourselves and really connect with other people by putting ourselves in their shoes. And Hayley says, and she's absolutely right, some people are great, natural empath, natural um, listeners, natural feelers of what's going on. Some people just really have to work for it and can come across as a bit colder. I'm not a naturally empathetic person. Haley will tell you that. So I, you know, I, wouldn't have dare, to... not <laughs> I have to, it doesn't come naturally. If someone is upset, I don't, I don't, I have to work hard to really be in the moment to feel what's going on or do my best to be authentic, to be in that moment with that person. Right? I just want to solutionize. I just want to solve the problem and move on. So I have to work harder in this space because people don't just want you to move them on really quickly. They want that time and space to be able to be heard. This is a nice quote um, that Haley's found, and I think it's a real good metaphor for where we are right now. I heard that we're all in the same boat, but it's not that. We're in the same storm but not in the same boat. So your ship could be shipwrecked and mine might not be or vice versa. It's nice, isn't it? It's kind of we are in that storm, but our situations are very different. So, you know, you can't just go in and solutionize because that solution might not be right for your team member. It might be right for you or somebody else. But until you've really done that pacing and listening, that being in the moment, that genuine empathy, you won't be able to understand the situation that that person's in. And for your managers to really grasp that concept, I think will be a bit of a shift change for a lot of people because they're used to just getting on with it, aren't we? So let's delve deeper into empathy. That's going to be the topic for the rest of what we're going to talk about today. In the chat, how empathetic are you as a, as a manager? With zero being, uh, I'm not empathetic at all. And 10 being, I think I'm really empathetic. Give me a give me a number in the chat if you if you're happy to share. Brilliant. Oh, we've got lots of tens. Okay, fantastic. Really empathetic. What's the challenge if you're scoring yourself quite high? If you are really empathetic, what challenges could you be facing if you're someone that really feels what's going on for other people? Uh, Emma says empathy doesn't come naturally to me either, but I've worked on it over the years. It's, 
brilliant ties into that self-awareness doesn't it I'd probably give myself about a three or a four so you know it's quite I have to work hard on this yes Sophie the weight and worry of other people's issues Naomi says I find it difficult to see past feelings absolutely probably quite a feeling preference in terms of insights Myers-Briggs really you take on board that emotion physically and emotionally for people um, Brian is not actually getting the results through people taking on too much of the load and bringing me down. We see this with managers, particularly caring that kind of parental type manager quite a lot. And this is where your challenge is going to be around boundary setting and not beating yourself up if you can't do something for that person. Abby talked about signposting earlier. Have your strategy as a, as a highly empathetic person to not take on the weight of the world. And by the time you go home to your partner, or your husband, your wife, your family, you're feeling drained and awful because you've got everyone else's problems on your shoulders. So, so that's a watch out as much as the lack of empathy is a watch out. So thank you so much. Uh, Karen says, I struggle to see why people can't find solutions and it frustrates me. Karen, I'm with you. I'm in that automatic space. Of, well, just, just go and do this then. If you've got that problem, you can solve it that way. But again, that's for us to work on and, and definitely for me to work on, because that's not always what people need when they're upset or they're struggling or they're kind of in that space hijacked emotionally. Uh, Karen says a spreadsheet is all sort of issues. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of a empathy quotient score exercise for you right now. So I just want you to do this um, on your own. Just grab a piece of paper and I want you to read each of the statements on the screen right now and score. So again, one being I don't agree with that statement at all and five being I really strongly agree. Now, we're not going to spend a huge amount of time on this, so you're welcome to take a screenshot, do this with your team, do this offline. Just have a read through. Uh, give yourself a, a, a one to a five score. And then we're just going to have a quick look at what those scores mean. And remember, you've got the recording as well, so you can go back and watch this another time. It might be worth just giving us a little hands up once you've done it so we get a sense of at least yeah. some of the group having a go. But if you don't get time today, um, like we say, this is obviously a bite sized session, so it can be something that you could maybe take away. But give us a little hands up when you have done it and then we'll get a feel for how people are getting on. Absolutely. I'm loving these honest reflections in the chat as well. I think it's um, it's great. So thanks for that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about that perception, this stuff, isn't it? Like if you're if mm -hmm. you're perceiving like how Bryony's put there around, I'm horrified if, if someone isn't that empathetic, it can come across as cold and harsh and sharp. But for that person, someone who's very empathetic can come across as fluffy and soft and, you mm. know, so it, it, it goes back to that dichotomy again, doesn't it? Definitely. Just coming together to do the right thing for your people and understand you know, we talked in the last session about our own preferences a little bit, didn't we, around hybrid working? This is very similar in that space. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. okay. How are we doing with our hands up? We've got about half the group, but just over probably. So I think um, I think that's a good amount, cause just bearing in mind with the time of the session. I think most people are getting getting through, which is good. Brilliant. We'll just, um, okay. just give it another couple of seconds and then we'll move on. Again, feel free to take a screenshot or come back and revisit this uh, this exercise. A few scores coming into the chat there as well. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. OK, interesting. You don't stuff. have to share your score, by the way. It's totally up to you. It's great to see them coming in, but equally don't feel you have to. Yeah, absolutely. Got some 30s, haven't we, which is yeah. quite interesting. Yeah, high empathy. It's interesting if you think about the people who've elected to come along to this session to support other people with the cost of living. I'm not surprised that everyone's scoring quite high on that empathy scale, actually. Yeah. So this is some of the scoring that sits behind this. Again, feel free to take a screenshot if you'd like to do this with your team or whatever it might be. So zero to uh, 15, you're not naturally empathetic. Um, it means that you need to be aware and consider how you come across and the impact of relationships with other people. Like Bryony talked about, sometimes you can be seen or you can see somebody as a bit sharp and cold if they're not empathetic and then therefore potentially struggle to connect with them. 
16 to 30, you display empathy, but you might find the situations when you can be less empathetic and you need to be aware of those specific situations and what that means for you. Is there other things going on for you? Is there triggers, for example? You know, the, the example that came in the chat, well, just go find a solution. You know, it's it's that, and I would definitely sit in that 16 to 30 bracket. <laughs> Most of you have come 30 to 40, naturally empathetic people and you feel listened to just be mindful of your own mental health your own feelings your own boundaries how much are you taking on um in that space as well it's just a really nice little exercise just to raise your awareness and do that as a team to understand where where empathy is and perhaps where it's not and what do you need to do as the manager to support your team in that space because empathy is a skill for everybody and it is a learnable skill by the way okay so what tips do you have to be mindfully empathetic. So that takes into account not overly empathetic boundaries that we talked about earlier. So Haley's going to give you access to the annotation on Teams. Um, you'll see a little box that's just popped up in the middle of the screen. You'll see a toolbar that comes up at the top of the screen shortly. And I'm just going to hand back over to Haley um, just to give you further instructions around how to use this annotation. Yeah, thanks, Erica. So you'll see a white box at the top of the screen, as Erica said. Um, you can grab the T for text. Um, and once you click on the T in that toolbar and click directly onto the screen, a text box appears. You can just type into the text box and click away once it's um, once you've finished. You sometimes have to click a couple of times into the text box. So if it's not quite working for you, persevere with, with clicking into that box. If, if, you're, if you're not getting on with the text tool, you've also got sticky notes. So the second icon along is a sticky note which you can put directly onto the screen and type into. Um, if you're not getting on with annotation at all, head to the chat and that's fine as well. And we can um, take your comments from there. So think about what tips you have to be more mindfully empathetic. What tips would you give to people? Would you offer to people to be more aware of their, their empathy in, with their teams? OK, so we've got be in the moment. Yeah, I think if there's one thing that is an underrated skill, whether it's in coaching, whether it's in management, relationship building, is that genuinely parking the internal voice and being in the moment with that person that you're speaking to, because that sends a signal that you're the most important thing right now to me, and I really take our relationship seriously. So I think that's a great one. Mm -hmm. Actively listening, allow the individual to explore potential solutions. Absolutely, that's your coaching skills, isn't it? Absolutely. Creating time and space for conversations that aren't strictly work related. So I remember when I first uh, started as a team leader um, and I had my weekly one to ones in with my team and everything would come in and bump them out of my calendar. So they, my team would often get one to ones being moved down the road or cancelled and not rescheduled. And inadvertently, I didn't realise at the time, but the message that's sending is everything else is more important than you. You know, so mm. what's the impact? Are managers doing that without even thinking about it? Mm. That availability, make time, that's going to build those relationships. And it's also very easy to jump into a conversation, even when you have made the time, but be distracted or go straight into business. Yeah, yeah, go straight into business. Absolutely. Yeah. Ensure no distractions when someone's having a conversation with you. Phone, there we go. Uh, no emails, phone, be on silent. Yeah, I used to work with a manager at LV, an ops manager, and we'd have these little breakout seats where you could sit in the corner for like quiet conversations. And he would sit there and scroll on his Blackberry. And I was like, do you realise the, the vibe that you're giving out to people? It's just, and you know, it took a long time for him to realise the impact of that. Time and private space, absolutely. Set aside time to talk. There's a lot around time, space, um, availability. If on Teams, don't be distracted checking emails. Listen and don't talk. Time again, building great relationships, making people feel important. Absolutely. It's all really, really important stuff. That mindfulness, that self-awareness, again, is that taking away your, your own stuff that's going on for that moment and just being there with the individual. So very powerful. Brilliant. OK, really good stuff. Thanks, everybody, for your uh, your interactions and your your thoughts on that. Some really great stuff. OK, so just to kind of consolidate this a little bit, then um, like the example I gave, 
stop finishing sentences and stop giving advice unless it's specifically asked for. Just listen. Be generous with your time is what you guys were talking about. Spend time with people who are different to you. Because again, you might be as a manager approaching something in a certain way, but actually you might learn from what your peers are doing. What's another manager doing? How else are people having conversations? Have you as a management group put this at the top of your next meeting agenda? Because actually this is probably one of the most important things going on right now. Uh, how do we, oh, it, I think Hayley can turn the annotation tool off uh, now, uh, Brian, if it's getting in the oh, way. Thanks apologies. for letting us know. Okay. Identify and challenge your own prejudice. What's going on for you? So when you do hear that issue that's happening, automatically we will judge. Automatically we'll put ourselves and think, well, this is what I do. So why don't you go and do that? But again, your challenge, your solution isn't right for other people. Explore the heart and not the head. If you're a thinking preference in Myers-Briggs terms, you will go straight into black or white solution challenge problem. Actually, that's not what people need. You need to really be in the moment, that kind of, that heart preference, that feeling preference. I'm gonna walk alongside you for that period of time, metaphorically, rather than walk ahead of you. Cultivate sense of curiosity, understand, ask questions, be kind, be genuine because um, those questions will really support you and get to know the deeper level uh, of that individual that you're working with or that you're um, that you're talking to right now. So let's dial that down again in regards to specifics. I'm going to hand you over to Hayley now um, for the next part of the session. Brilliant. Thanks, Erica. Thanks again. So much interaction this morning. I'm loving it and seeing all your thoughts coming in. Um, so we're going to get a bit more specific now again and this is again just going under as Erica said before that surface level oh we need empathy what what does this mean um, and what does it sound like more importantly so I want you to think specifically now about a situation where maybe you have felt that somebody's really empathized with you or that you felt you've had a great conversation with somebody else what words or, or phrases did you use or could you use to display empathy? What does this actually sound like in a conversation? What kind of things do we say? So let me know in the chat what your thoughts are. How are you, Sophie? So yeah, checking in on them. There's the look to our body language, absolutely. So it's not just what we say, it's how we say it. And we know, we know that, you know, it's a high percentage of, of our body language that contributes to our communication. That must be such a worry, Liz. Exactly that. So just really reflecting on the fact that actually I would feel like that too, or that must be a real worry for you. Definitely. It sounds really tough. How are you? These are all great stuff. Acknowledgement. How are you doing? With all of this in mind, where do we tend to go as people? And this doesn't make us bad people, but when somebody comes with us with a situation they're finding really tough, what do we na more naturally want to do? as opposed to say that's really worrying for you what's a more common response do you think that we hear we solve we want to solve it for them we want to fix it for them at least you have this think about the positives but look <laughs> at all the but look at all the great stuff that's happening and we do all of this with great intention so some of the things that we can say and you've come up with so much of this already keep them coming as well because you'll have more beyond what we're sharing with you what do you need right now OK, so we're having this conversation. What do you need right now? I'm sorry you're going through this. That's like, similar to some of the things that you guys have already come up with. That sounds really challenging. That sounds really tough. And I can see how that would be difficult. Is there anything I can just do to support this right now? Absolutely, Phil. So that's similar to the one that we've got in at the top mm. there. The things that we will most naturally come to and say in a situation like this, and it's very easy, we're all here in, a, in an online environment talking about empathy. It's more easy, isn't it, to come up with these answers because we're in that space. But the things that we often come up with when we're in a conversation like this is let me tell you how much worse it is for me. And I'm not <laughs> saying you would say it in that way, but you're very likely to say, oh, honestly, that's happened to me. But instead of this, this happened, you know, and it's very easy to do that in trying to relate but what that does is squashes people's um, emotion or problem or issue and becomes more about you it could be worse so we've come up with this already it could be worse you know this could be happening think of the positive um, 
going back to policy quite often we'll say I'd love to be able to help you with that but the company policy says this I think the the paying the expenses one is a really good example for that sorry it's it's the it's payroll it's the policy that's just what we do yeah 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 so someone comes to you and says look I really I can't afford to go to this meeting um, in a couple of weeks because I can't afford to be 30 days behind on the cash now it would you you need to remember what someone's gone through ahead of that even having that conversation to actually mm. feel that they can say it in the first place but then to be hit with well I can't you know my hands are tied the company policy says this is a really difficult response for somebody um, to take on board so just some what some things to be mindful of really some things to again share with your teams um, in terms of how that can feel in that particular particular situation Mm, absolutely it's 10 past 10 11 minutes past 10 time just turned so we've got just a few minutes left to go um thank you again so much for all of your interaction this morning it's been great i'm loving i'm really enjoying these sessions and being able to to have these kind of short bite-sized times to share some of this with you um what has been your biggest takeaway i know we came in and we thought about how this applies to us how is this relevant for us when we first came into the session What's been your biggest learn from the session today? And pop those into the chat and let's start to see and just reflect, I suppose, if you can take something from that 45 minutes and it's been a really useful um, way to spend your time. So it'd be good to hear what those takeaways are. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's so easy just to get swept up in day to day, watching the news, watching social media, doom scrolling, mortgage rates, interest rates, this, that and the other. Sometimes it's just we just need to step back and say, what does that mean for everybody else? What's my role as a manager here? Mm, definitely. What's within my control? What can I do? Mm, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm loving seeing the variety of things coming through here as takeaways, um, which is great, which shows it's tapping into different people's blind spots, maybe. Yeah. Absolutely. The Linda says the storm analogy. I think that's resonated with a few people, isn't it? Yeah, Liz said the same. It's yeah. a nice one, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Phil says it'll be affecting everyone in the team. Absolutely. It affects everybody. You know, it affects people that I think they see on the news quite a lot. People who would perhaps wouldn't typically or maybe be a bit more affluent, wouldn't typically be affected by an increase in interest rates or something. But actually, we're seeing that creep up. It's affecting mm most people now isn't it yeah it's just um it's interesting and, and it's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride next year so this is a feel more confident brilliant fantastic the media and the news are not helping phil i totally agree <laughs> oh absolutely That's, that is really something that again that is within our control what we tune into what we educate ourselves on um and what we and, and at what point we decide to tune out from that because the media um can really get inside people's heads and i think following on from the pandemic there's more of a habit of following the media maybe from those mm. that might not have followed it so closely before um absolutely so some great stuff coming in it's, it's brilliant just to see such a variety to be honest of takeaways coming from you all because it's just showing me that it's just tapping into people's slightly different needs um around around empathy and what that looks like so thank you for sharing those and for all your reflection today um we've got three more workshops left of our of our program so we've got creating psychological safety which is our next one on the 24th of november we've got manager as coach so today we've delved more into empathy but i think the coaching piece will also sit alongside Side. they kind of all support each other um, you're probably starting to see those themes and then the final one is inclusive management on the 12th of December and it's scary how quickly that's going to come around mm. um, Eric has popped the links into the chat for you which obviously you can access now but also at the end of the session as well um, you'll get the recording of the session and um, via the YouTube link at the end of the session today once that's downloaded and I think that's it for me. So thank you so much. Um, Erica, did you have anything you wanted just to add before uh, before everybody goes? No, thank you so much for your engagement as per usual. Fantastic and uh, really kind of makes these sessions feel different. So do get in touch uh, if there's uh, anything we can support you with. You've got our details and it will be great to see you on the next three sessions that we've got scheduled um, as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. That's bang on 10.15, so that's not bad going, is it? Um, <laughs> Thanks, everyone. And, uh, look forward to seeing you on the next session. Have a great day, guys. Thanks ever so much. Bye. Thanks. Thank you so much. And the recording off.